Welcome back to Badger Canyon Motorsports. Today, we're working on the Rat Rod Wagons. That only took me three times to say. Join us, shall you? Saturday day after Thanksgiving and we're back out here in the shop getting ready to assemble some wheels for the rat rod wagons thank you for everyone tuning in I uh, would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel one click it's right down there it would be awesome uh, it would also be awesome if you gave it a thumbs up and left a comment down below also you can go to Instagram or Facebook at Badger Canyon Motorsports and you can follow us over there. I do post stuff uh, in between build videos. So if you want to see updates on what we're doing over the or doing in the shop, go ahead and follow us over there. Let's get on with it. I'm freezing uh, first off, so I'm gonna build a fire in the fireplace, and we are gonna get to assembling some wheels. So the wheels that we got from Go Power Sports, these are their four inch floater wheels. And they're exactly that. You press bearings in them and they're floater wheels. They're steering or uh, here, one spinny side for a, a one wheeler peeler. Anyway, these are gonna be a live axle set up on these rat rod wagons. So we needed to make a way for that to fit onto a one inch keyed shaft so a big bearing store one inch shaft couplers and these are I think these were like 768 or something a pop and they're actually another inch longer but I had my buddy Shane do some uh, turning on them and got these suckers down to inch and three eighths which is exactly what these guys are. Now he's a couple thou off. I believe these measured at 1.366 and I believe these are 1.364 so they're a couple thousandths off um, so they slide very nicely very very nicely into position here. Now because these wheels already had grease zerks uh, in the in the back on the inside of the the rim uh, Shane went ahead and lined up the set screw hole for the locking couplers with the grease zerk fitting so when these go in we're actually going to thread that grub screw right into the grease zerk fitting on the wheel. I'm gonna get that sucker in there and then get that lined up. Let's see here. So if y'all can see right through that, you can see the grub screw poking out of the keyway there. And I hope, let's see, let me look on the camera here. Bam, camera on. Right there, you can see that grub screw poking out of that keyway but we need a way other than the sheer strength of that their grub screw to hold this hub adapter to the wheel now if I had a TIG welder I'd just go ahead and fuse that all the way around um, I don't have a TIG welder I got a MIG welder it's a cheap one from Harbor Freight but it served me well so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tack it
Okay, so I've been prototyping the uh, the steering arms here. Uh, so we're gonna set these steering arms up with Ackerman geometry. So the the steering arms are kicked in at the angle between the kingpin and the center of the rear axle. Um, so in our case, the go kart is. Well, half of it from the kingpin to the center line is 12 inches, and then from the front axle to the rear axle is 48 inches. So, four to one, you figure it out, that's a 15 degree angle on the steering arms. Unfortunately, the spindle brackets, if you were to uh, weld the arms up at that 15 degrees would only allow for I think something in the neighborhood of 20 degrees of steering or less uh, so we got to notch the steering arms so I made this prototype yesterday just after filming uh, putting the wheels together and I've been playing around with it a little bit I wasn't quite sure um, so this is this is eighth inch thick one inch wide uh, bar stock so I kind of played around with it you can see I uh, etched in and, and did measurements and all that stuff and I was playing around last night with some different designs and I came up with I came up with a, a good design that we're we're doing today so this is this is our our finished product steering arm um, so this would have left half an inch of material here I ended up kicking it out and stiffening it up so this is three quarters of an inch wide now I've got two spots for uh, steering short throw long throw um, just like a, a servo horn on a rudder or on a, a, a RC plane or something so you can adjust how much throw uh, finished or refined the notch and all that stuff uh, so we've got four of these made and now we can go ahead and weld these onto the spindles so let's go over to the welder and get these set up okay so we got our square hooked up so we've got our square set up uh, this is our angle our 15 degrees um, so we set it at 105 degrees. Uh, this is the angle offset angle our steering arm is going to be. We also want this to be flat with this. So we've got this clamped in and cocked over. Um, so this is set to be the same angle and 90 degrees between here and here.
All right, so here is one completed steering arm spindle setup, whatever you want to call it. You can see everything clears, and that's where it stops right there. Let's do a quick close up here. Alright, so we've only got three more of those to do, and then we can start on the steering column getting the front mount uh, or front pivot point here in, set the angle of our column, and get the pitman arm on. So I ended up having to mount the body on this thing uh, a little earlier than I was going to. And that's just so that we can get the height of the steering column mocked up. And I kind of did a little playing around today um, with where the bracket for the steering column is going to sit here. And I've actually got it so that it's going to come up above this front lip. So we're not cutting any gaping hole uh, in the front of this wagon at all. So really the only holes we're going to cut in the wagon body itself um, are just a couple extra uh, body mount bolts body mount holes to uh, bolt this thing down and then of course the holes in the back for the cables for the gas the brake and the kill switch to go through back to the engine so really we're only going to drill three holes in the back here um, but I think we're going to end off this video here uh, I've still got some more mocking up and, and stuff to do with the um, steering column but we do have the steering at the very least done so that it, it will turn um, and we do have a roller now we got the rear axle in and so I've got those measured up now so that I can have my buddy Shane cut them down and tap or drill and tap the ends of them for our uh, keepers so let's scoot back just a little bit So, we officially do have a rolling chassis now, which is freaking awesome. Um, next episode, we're going to get the steering column done and in. We're going to start working on the seat, and we will have the engine mount plates, the steering wheel adapter, and the disc brake from my buddy Seth over at DM Targets, uh, plasma cutout. So we can go ahead and install those and get the engine on as well. Look forward to that uh, in our next episode. Once again, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We post pictures of the build progress in between videos. You can go follow us over there and, again, give us a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, drop a comment below and I answer every every comment any question that I, I get um, you know because we're not that big and I have time to answer all those questions thanks for watching Badger Canyon Motorsports we'll see you in the next episode